Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'll show how I attempted to make a modern Regency gown. This is probably my least favorite era of dresses. I don't particularly like the empire waistline on myself and the best way to accept and enjoy something is to try it out. So this project is me trying to stand the Regency silhouette. How quickly do you think I can make a Regency gown? I'm about to find out. A thing that I don't really like is to drape, it just doesn't really make sense to me, so why not combine it? I'm going to both make a garment I don't really like and use techniques I don't like. This is going to turn out glorious. The front is a bit scary, so I'm going to start out with the back. I'm using scrap pieces of cotton and fitting it to the mannequin. Then I'm just going to draw it out. Now that I've drawn out the shape, I'm just going to draw out where I feel like the line should be. Just... This definitely looks like a shape. So what I've done now is just to freshen up the lines and cut out the pieces and this is then going to become my pattern. So what I'm going to do next is to cut these pieces out of my muslin fabric and then make a mock-up of the top. Once I was happy with the mock-up I started cutting out the bodies from the fashion fabric. I had less than 2 meters of fabric, so my original plan was to piece some parts of the bodies, but I managed to figure out a way to cut out most of the pieces whole. Then I immediately forgot about that. I messed up! I haven't even cut out all of the pieces and I've already messed up! So I was only supposed to cut out one of these and I cut them out double as an idiot. And uh, now I don't really have any fabric left to cut out a whole bib, which was the entire point of trying to be very restrictive and saving fabric, so um, piecing is period, isn't it? So new plan is to just go along with the old plan and see what I have left over of fabric and then, then we'll just have to piece together whatever's left and uh, make it into a new bib, so yay! All right, so this is what I have left of the fabric. It was about one and a half meter. So I'm planning to use about 80 centimeters for the skirt, which means it's gonna reach me to right below the knee. And that's about this fold right here. So this part is gonna be the main part of the skirt. That's not enough fabric. And then I have this little sliver of fabric left that's going to be the front of the skirt so what I've done is just to put the ruler out to measure where the line side seam is going to be on that skirt and I've tried to flare it out just so I can get a bit more width at the bottom and then this is going to be the top and I will probably gather it down a bit and then this part will be, be mostly gathered down, but I might also do the same thing that I just cut a triangle out of this to be able to get a bit more flair at the bottom of the hem. And I did that, immediately regretting that I cut out the front skirt panel as it made me lose a couple of centimeters on the two back panels. Oh, 
Well, I could do this, just cut it like an idiot, or I could actually measure and see what I want beforehand. This is the same method as you've seen me do on all of my skirts, and it's a very historical, accurate way of getting the most out of your fabric. Okay. It looks like a skirt, doesn't it? This means that this is what I have left to make the bib out of. Wish me luck. And then this is what the final skirt pieces look like. I ended up piecing the scraps together with the extra back piece that I cut. This gave me more fabric than I needed which allowed me to gather it. I did want to make a plain dress, but the gathered front is more common and I think it helps with the overall silhouette and makes the dress more interesting to look at. Then I cut out the lining of some cotton canvas. I didn't have a pattern for the bib, but I wanted it to reach from one arm to the other. I marked all my stitch lines with a pencil. And then I trimmed away the seam allowances around the neck to make it easier to fold over. Then I assembled the bodice, being careful to follow the markings. The seam allowances were not trimmed down before felling them over. The thicker seams gave some more structure to the bodies, much the same as if they had been corded or lightly boned. Okay, so I'm just popping in here to explain what I'm doing. So this is the front piece and the closure is supposed to be right here. Uh, I didn't have enough fabric to cut this entire piece out in one and in a lot of patterns I've seen this piece is usually cut out separately so what I've done is just to cut out pieces in the lining fabric and the fashion fabric and I'm going to trim away same as here what is going to be the neckline this is just so that it's easier to fold over for me later and then I'm going to sew it onto the this one the same as I've done and will be doing everywhere else To avoid bulk in the seams, I trimmed off some of the excess fabric.
I used a simple whip stitch to fold down the seam allowances, making sure the stitching is not visible from the outside. The sleeves were unlined and sewed up using French seams. The number one Regency rule for short sleeves is that they should reach down to the waistline of the dress. You see this with long sleeves as well with the poofy part of the upper sleeve. With the amount of fabric that I had available, this was as puffy as I could make them. I made gathers as I pinned them in, placing them further to the back than what we do on modern clothes, as this is how the Regency sleeves look. Then they were basted on by machine before sewn up properly. I don't think I actually ever did that though. Instead I went back in and adjusted the neckline. So this is what it looks like on the mannequin after doing all that. Obviously the front part needs to be adjusted quite a bit. Uh, they ended up poofier than what I hoped, which is good. I uh, still don't know how to gather them since I don't have fabric to make a uh, cuff for them. Uh, another interesting thing to note is that I felt like I s these are quite deep set for a modern pattern, but they are not nearly deep enough into the back of this to be considered Regency, I think. Uh, they would have needed to almost cover the entire shoulder blade, depending on which year you're basing the pattern on, but that would have been approximately here. So um, if I were to take this in in the back, this would actually look a lot more appropriate. So I'm thinking that if I were to use this pattern again, that's what I could possibly do. To just remove four centimeters off the back and then that would be appropriate. Obviously, then I would need to adjust it in the front, but it doesn't actually look that bad either. I might have to try it on like this, just to see, but then again I really liked having the back in one piece and I don't really want to take it in and have a seam in the back just for this, but uh, it could be interesting to just try it on and see what it looks like. Then the center front seam was finished. I moved on to the sleeves and turned the raw seam over once and stitched it down. I found this elastic trim and decided to use them to help gather up the bottom part of the sleeves, folding the seam over again thus hiding the raw edge and top stitching the elastic on while stretching it out.
The twill cotton that my dress is made out of frayed more than I hoped, so I tried to finish the neckline much the same way as the sleeves. Here I sewed an overlock stitch to cover the raw edge and top stitched it down together with the elastic. Here I didn't need to stretch it, so I tried not to pull on it while stitching. Centre front was left undecorated, so this part was fell down by hand. It's ironic that the nicest and most carefully sewn part of the bodice was hidden away. Then I found some buttons in my stash for the closure. Some of these buttons are older than my grandparents. I've picked them up and inherited button jars and tins. I love these little time capsules. It feels like we all have this inherited instinct of collecting and saving them in a special box. Even people who don't sew, like gathering all the plastic bags in a special plastic bag bag. I found these three that matched. I decided I'd only needed two. Then I measured out and sewed the buttonholes. After a closer look, I'm fairly certain these are made out of bone or horn, so I feel a bit bad for wasting them for this, as it's hidden, but I can always switch them out later. I still hadn't decided whether I wanted the back to be raised or not. From the small bit of research I did, this wasn't common until the later part of the region's era, and the front and sleeves looked more like the middle part of the era, so I slept on it. And I decided to try the slightly raised back as I find it more attractive. Where I'm from, our national costume vary from area to area, and they all tend to be based in different fashion eras as well. The ones that are made in the Regency fashion has the narrow raised back, so I decided to follow that as an example. Here I'm piecing together the bib front. The top is turned over once and stitched down. Then I sew two rows of gathering stitches at the top and bottom. I pull the under thread to gather it down to fit the lining piece. Mm -hmm. 
it did end up shorter than I had originally planned, but I also think this was a more appropriate size for the bodice. The bottom was top stitched down by machine and then the front skirt panel was gathered down as well. I tried to make the front lay flatter for what I perceive a more flattering silhouette. This was also common especially with dresses with less fabric like this. It was also sewn to the bib. The sides and top were fell down using a ladder stitch. This was really helpful in making the gathered fabric at the top lay nicely. I do prefer using a whip stitch, I feel like it's faster and stronger but the ladder stitch do look nicer and it is very satisfying to watch on video. At this point the dress was nearing the end, it doesn't look like much yet, but the worst is now behind us. The skirt seams were sewn up using French seams. You might have noticed that this will be a very short skirt, but I did say that this would be a more modern version of the apron dress. But if I ever were to make this again, I would try to make a proper dress with a full skirt and long sleeves. Double rows of gathering stitches were sewn into the back panel and it was fitted to the bodice. I didn't measure where to fit it, so I pinned it and hoped for the best. That obviously didn't work because now these don't match anymore. I need to take the skirt off and redo it. I did that and remember that I was supposed to add a bias tape to cover the raw edge.
is wrong, is it? This was stitched on the wrong way. It is. <sighs> and then the third time around the skirt was sewn on. Seam allowances were trimmed down and a bias tape folded over and stitched down by hand. When stitching the front skirt panel to the side panels, I offset the two so that I could fold the wefted edge of the side panels over the raw edge and top stitch it down. This was done to give me another centimetre of fabric for the skirt and it helps the fabric lay nicer at the apron closure. Then I removed all the visible gathering threads. Okay, so this is what it looks like at the moment. Not bad, but uh, I, I still, I'm still not convinced. Um, this is what the back looks like and it doesn't look proper, but, but I think it looks good. Uh, you can definitely tell that I need some sort of waistband for this and I did finally find a ribbon that matched uh, just so that it can hold everything in and basically show where the waist is supposed to be so all that's reminding now is to fell all the seams and do the hem I guess I left a 15 centimeter gap at the top to get the dress on and off this raw edge was turned over twice and tacked down with a simple running stitch The excess lining fabric for the bib was used to cover the raw seams and I pressed this seam up to make sure that I added volume to the bust and not the waist. The hem was rolled up and it looks like I'm using whip stitches again. For authenticity, I'm not adding a closing mechanism for the bib, I'm going to use needles. This is for authenticity, of course, not because I'm lazy but I should probably add buttons or hooks if I ever want to wear this dress. That being said, all of those options would be historically accurate. I measure out my ribbon and sew it to the front using tiny stitches. 
The reason I like hand stitching is because I feel like I have more control, but also that I can watch shows while working. The reason I often have to mute the video footage is for the same reason. Then I made little loop-de-loops at the side and wherever I needed to help the ribbon along the curve of the back. I burnt the edges of the ribbon and that's it for this project. It ended up more or less how I imagined. I won't say I've fallen in love with this silhouette, but I ended up putting several days of work into this dress, and I can't help with feeling a bit happy about the result. And if I come across the right fabric, I would like to try this again. I watched another costumer recommend that you'd use a corset rather than modern underwear with this dress, and I'm here to say that it would probably have looked better if I hadn't. The Regency bust would be higher than natural, and my Victorian corset bust is lower than natural, so it looks a bit ill-fitting. But thank you so much for following along. Until next time. Okay, so I thought I might go through the inside of this uh, dress and uh, let's just do it as if I'm a YouTuber going through an extant garment. So we start on the outside, you can see tiny little stitches that holds this ribbon in place, the top bib front is gathered, you can see the marks after the pins that were used for this. Um, this is the inside of the bib. This one is just tacked down all around. This thing is covering this uh, raw edge. Here you can see the tiny little uneven stitching. They didn't care, it was going to be on the inside anyway. Then you have these dainty little buttonholes. They are not very pretty, but they are on the inside, so it doesn't really matter. And then the bottom edge is covered with a bias tape. Here on the inside you can see these very thick channels. It feels like there could be some boning in there, but it's 
most likely just fabric and these are also tacked down. The armhole is not treated in any way, they're just trimmed down and left like that. Uh, but it hasn't really frayed and when you do this zigzag thing it's not really going to fray if you have a good enough fabric. Then you have these little buttons that are most likely made out of bone. And this ribbon decoration thing is just sewn on and they've also caught this other side it's been fell down with that stitch and you can see here in the back where they didn't catch the lining that should probably have been tacked down and it probably didn't even bother and then here you have the visible stitching they stitched all the way through these are little loop-de-loops on the back and the skirt is unlined